Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing the extrinsic aspect or the extrinsic mechanism of apoptosis. If you want to watch our previous videos on apoptosis or the intrinsic mechanism, go to our YouTube channel. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe because your support really means a lot to us. With that being said, let's get a quick overview of apoptosis. Apoptosis is a type of cellular suicide, essentially. That is what apoptosis is. It's relying on ATP because it is genetically programmed cell death. And because it is genetically programmed, you need ATP for proper functioning. It can be caused by the cell itself or other cells can also cause apoptosis. For example, if you have a, a uh, infected cell, right, you might want to kill that cell off. If you have a cancer growing, you want to kill it off. Or if you have a malfunctioning cell, you might want to kill it off as well. So these are just some of the reasons why another cell can induce apoptosis. It can involve a single cell or a small group of cells, but it will never involve a large group because a large group of cells is actually, uh, it's large die-off of cells is cellular necrosis, not apoptosis. Apoptosis can lead to cellular necrosis for sure, but it is not defined as uh, a large group. It is usually defined on a small scale at a singular cell level or a small group of cells. And some physiologic examples, some normal examples of apoptosis are endometrial shedding during the mensi or the, the menstrual cycle. The endometrium dies off and slumps off. Uh, CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells can cause apoptosis upon another cell. That's one mediated uh, way of cell death. Or embryogenesis, something that happens all the time in embryogenesis. Apoptosis is very regular. So one thing to remember is that because it requires ATP, you also need functioning caspase enzymes for cellular degradation. They're going to function as the key mediator. Very important. The caspases are the key mediator for apoptosis, and they're going to break down the cytoskeleton as well as degrade DNA by activating endonucleases that are cut that cut at internucleosomal regions. Yeah, all of this is just additional information I put in there. What you need to remember, very high yield stuff that you need to remember is the next fact. When it comes to cellular apoptosis and the activation of endonucleases, what you're going to end up with is a DNA degradation product that is going to be uh, 108, 180 excuse me, base pairs long. When you break down DNA during apoptosis, you're going to have segments of DNA that are multiples of 180 base pairs. This is a sensitive indicator of apoptosis. So this is a very high yield fact that you should always remember. If you see anything 180 base pairs long, it's probably talking about apoptosis. And this is an easy question that you can get on any exam. The cell membrane, however, is going to remain intact because you do not have inflammation happening. What, ha what ends up happening is when the cell membrane gets damaged, like if, for example, in necrosis, when you have cellular membrane damage, right? This is going to cause a release of the intracellular intracellular components. And when you release these intracellular components, a lot of these are actually very pro-inflammatory. And when they interact with the nearby cells, you are going to get inflammation. That is what happens when the cellular membrane is damaged. But because in apoptosis, you do not see that, you are not going to have a release of intracellular components. You are not going to have any inflammation either. That is very important. In necrosis, you will. So with that being said, let's just dive in and talk about the second pathway, which is the extrinsic pathway. There are two main mechanisms in which the extrinsic pathway can affect um, the the cell and cause apoptosis. The first is the ligand receptor interactions that you see with fast ligand binding to CD95 or fast. When the ligand binds to CD95 or the TNF alpha receptor binding to its receptor, right? So these are the two main ligands. The two ligands are fast ligand and TNF, tumor necrosis factor alpha. When these bind to their receptors, you're going to have the cell recognize itself as uh, that it needs to die off. It's a signal that's being given that says, you know what, it's time, buddy, let's go. Fast ends up binding, or fast ligand binds to CD95, 
and that's going to lead to cellular death. One thing to remember is that let's say you get a, a question in which CD95 okay, is no longer expressed on a cell. What is one potential consequence of no expression of CD95? It's simple. It's cancer. Okay, you can get cancer occurring because fast ligand cannot bind to fast to induce apoptosis. The other example, the other pathway, is immune cell mediated, and this is going to be mediated by cytotoxic T cells. Okay, CD8 positive T cells. These T cells are actually going to release enzymes called perforin and granzymes. Granzyme B specifically. When this happens, granzymes are going to enter and activate the caspases. And once you activate the caspases, you already know that is going to cause apoptosis to occur. Caspases are essentially the end all of apoptosis. Once they're activated, buddy, you are not going back. That's very important. So you need to understand that the FAS and the FAS ligand interaction is very important for medullary negative uh, selection in the thymus. Remember, T cells mature in the thymus, right? And you have to have different mechanisms of making sure that T cells are maturing properly, that you are able to recognize antigens as well as able to recognize uh, self antigen and foreign antigens. Now, the extrinsic pathway actually allows for T cells to be filtered so that they don't attack our own body's proteins. That's very important because let's say they are, uh, they are given a stimulus in the medulla of the thymus. They are given a stimulus where they're given a, a pretty much self-antigen. If they bind to that self-antigen, we know that they're most likely going to attack our own body, and that's very bad because then you can get autoimmune conditions, right? So... The FAST ligand and FAST L is also not only important for cancer, but also for autoimmune conditions. We talked about that uh, in our previous video. So mutations in the FAST will lead to increased numbers of circulating self-reacting lymphocytes, aka you can get autoimmune conditions forming. This can be caused by clonal uh, failure of clonal deletion. Defective FAST and FAST like interactions usually cause autoimmune lymphoproliferative syndrome, syndromes. Excuse me. And with that being said, that's pretty much everything you need to know for the extrinsic pathway when it comes to apoptosis. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you back here real soon.